when New Harbinger started, um, I was seeing clients who had lots of different needs, and and there was very little out there in the literature. There's very little self-help literature that uh, was was useful. Um, some of it, again, was inspirational or the ain't it awful kind of books. Uh, very little in the way of actual tools to help people change. And I remember feeling this incredible frustration, uh, this, this sense of, you know, I, I, I want to give people something that they can take home and work on, uh, and no one was doing it. And um, I, I wanted to start creating books that would give them the tools that they lacked and, and would give even therapists an opportunity to use them as a, as adjunctive bibliotherapy processes. So uh, it was important to me to do that. Uh, the very first uh, workbook we did, uh, my girlfriend at the time was working at Kaiser. She was a psychologist. She was working uh, uh, doing stress reduction uh, groups. And, uh, and no one really had, there, there was no books out there. There was nothing really out there about how to do these techniques. And she said, well, I think I'm going to put together a little pamphlet and mimeograph it. And I said, don't mimeograph it. Let's do a book. <laughs> and, uh, and she agreed. And we uh, put the get together the Relaxation Stress Reduction Workbook. And so Martha Davis and I and uh, Beth Eshelman created the, the first New Harbinger Workbook. And it was really just for clients in, at, at, at Kaiser who were in these stress groups. And we took their needs and turned it into this, um, this, this larger uh, guidebook for, for helping people with stress. And now over a million of the copies of that book have been sold worldwide. Our first trade book um, involved setting type um, on an old fashioned typesetting machine. It was sort of a photographic sort of, of thing where you had to type in every single letter. And um, from there, there was a process called burning a plate, and then you had to put it on the press and so on. If you wanted to make a change, uh, you had to go back to the original artwork and cut one word out and paste another word in. It was all very mechanical and photographic. Um, and likewise, the whole printing and binding process. They were separate industries, and they were done as separate steps. And um, all that has changed now. Now it's, of course, all computerized. You're from the mind of the author into the computer and ultimately through many steps and many other people's computers onto the printed page. So it's been a complete 100% revolution. For several years before we found uh, Ed Bourne, who wrote the Anxiety and Phobia Workbook, we had, we had gone through several different proposals of authors whose who were proposing anxiety books that were similar, but w either were not evidence-based, weren't well written, uh, or actually didn't teach people in a way that was easily followed and, and used. Uh, in other words, the, the, the teaching techniques were, were not very effective. So we discarded uh, three other books that were later published by other publishers uh, before we found the Anxiety and Phobia Workbook. And, and, and truthfully, that was a far better book. And actually, having sold more than a million copies, uh, the, the public and, and the psychotherapists who endorsed that book uh, agree. Uh, but that always was our focus, how to find a book that, that's evidence-based, that, that really is, is built on science, and, and a book that teaches people how to change in a way that's step-by-step, step, as Pat was talking about, from that old self-help book on, on piano tuning, you know, you know, how do you build skills in a, in a careful way so that first you learn this, then this, and this, and by the time you get to the end of the book, you have a set of skills that have, that have grown in, in a step-by-step -step fashion. Furthermore, we wanted to make sure that any author um, is, is teaching skills in the new Harbinger way. First, you have to give the precept. You have to explain what the concept is. Then, then you have to give an example and then you have to give uh, the, the reader an opportunity to actually experience and work on the, um, the new skill. And that might be done uh, through an experiential exercise or worksheets and so forth. So we wanted them to teach people 
how to change their lives in these three different ways. And we know that's effective uh, because our workbooks have been helping people for 40 years. When um, Matt and I got the, the, the company up to a certain size, uh, there were other companies interested in, in perhaps buying New Harbinger. Um, there were a lot of merger and acquisitions activity in the publishing industry. And we watched a couple of our acquaintances uh, do that, sell out to a larger entity. And what invariably happened, especially to West Coast publishers, was that the new larger owner of the company would come in and cherry pick three or four top best-selling uh, titles and perhaps a couple of managing uh, executives and then close up the shop. And we uh, didn't want to see that happen to our family of people at uh, New Harbinger. And so we thought, what else can be done? Um, and we hit upon the idea of, of trying to make it an employee-owned uh, company. And so we did a lot of exploration and learning about that. Uh, at the time, we were just barely big enough with enough capital and assets and resources and so on to do that. Um, but it's worked out splendidly and have absolutely no regrets. Uh, the employees, uh, employee owners at New Harbinger now own the majority of the shares of the company. Uh, Matt and I are minority shareholders at this time, and uh, from almost the moment that we began employee ownership, uh, the productivity and profitability and just the pleasure of working at New Harbinger have uh, gone way up. One of the things that I think about often is, is fate. And, you know, I, you know, pretty early in life started out saying to myself, well, I, I, I want to be a psychotherapist, I want to be a psychologist, this is important to me. Uh, and then one day I showed up uh, at a bar and after a couple of drinks, Pat handed me the box of stationery and, and the, uh, uh, the, you know, the receipt for a post office box and um, said, here, let's, let's, let's start a publishing business. Um, and I had no idea when I said yes to that, uh, that I was going to change my life, and that, and that this thing that just showed up serendipitously, that, that, that you, you just walked in and said, let's do this on a lark, um, would turn out to be kind of the center of, of my life and what, what truly matters to me. It still very much matters to me to be a psychologist, and I really care about my patients, and yet this work has, has has been so meaningful to me that I feel like very, very privileged and very lucky. And I'm, uh, even though that bar, which is Breen's in San Francisco, is long since closed, uh, I think of that as a very, very lucky day in my life uh, when Pat uh, proposed New Harbinger. Yeah. Well, I, th I think from my point of view, I would back it up in time just a little bit. I'm thankful that I've had 40 years of being in business with my best friend. Um, it's true that back then I, I wanted to have a publishing company. I was very interested in, in doing that. But uh, a month or two before the meeting in the bar, I believe we had uh, gotten rid of a rowboat with an outboard motor that we used to dink around with, and we had no activity to do together. And we hadn't seen each other for a while. And I thought, well, why don't I rope Matthew in on this publishing idea? Because then we'll have an excuse to get together once in a while and fiddle around with it. And uh, I've totally enjoyed doing that. And I'm very proud of what we fiddled around with. Yeah, from that back bedroom that we worked in to this moment 40 years later, it feels like a long journey, but one I'm so grateful we took together. <laughs>